Hey guys, how you doing? Big John with Jay Custom Builds. It's Thursday evening and uh, I'm going to start doing the cams on my 2007 Ultra Classic, also named Blue. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, take off this bag. So the next steps are you drop the front floorboard, you take the back bolt off, loosen up the front bolt and swing it down, which a lot of people do, which I'll probably do. You gotta do that before you take the actual exhaust off. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna take the air filter off. So the floorboard, air filter, and then the right side exhaust. Since it's true duals, I don't have to mess with anything on, on the left side over there. So this is a 5 So the only thing I'm taking off is a cover to give me, give myself more room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my floorboard off just to make it uh, easier for me. So this is a little short stubby on a quarter inch drive and it's gonna get in here perfectly because I did not have any room to get that off. All right, that's coming off perfectly. I'm gonna put this back in here so I know exactly where it is. And let's get this in there. All right, so now I'm gonna take the uh, exhaust off. These are half inch. Better if you use a quarter inch and you get a swivel, it's a lot better. I wanted to jack the bike up. I just can't move it on my own right now. I'm trying to put the jack under it and the bike's too low. Especially now that I put those new shocks on it. It's a lot lower in the back. So there's two bolts in the back to hold the exhaust and then there's a half, a 9 16 bolt right here on this bracket. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. After you take that bolt off there and then the one on the other side, there's a 9 16 bolt going down there and a nut right there so i'm going to take that nut off they're both 9 16 and then you just have to pull these two off and the whole exhaust comes off oh man you guys didn't actually see that so i took the bolt off that was down there those two bolts that were up there and the two bolts that were holding the exhaust and i put it over there all in one piece sorry about that i thought i was recording so now i'm going to take the timing cover off and I'm gonna get a bucket because that girl's gonna leak all over the place. So what I do is I usually break them all. Oh man, those are on there. Oh, that one came loose. You wanna give them a, a few turns like that. And if they don't, if they don't loosen up right away, stop because they will round out and you will screw these up. These are actually stainless steel bolts on this bike though. That one was kind of tight. Oh, hey, brother. I'm going to do the cams. <laughs> yeah, I got to cut the, uh, yeah, I got to cut the push rods. How you doing, man? How was your day? So basically I'm using my Milwaukee here to, since I already broke them all and then I'm, uh, you know, once they're already off, it's no big deal. I don't do this while they're torqued because I don't want to actually strip the heads. My brother just got here. How was your day, man? That was good. Right. Yeah. Let me beat that off really quick. Sometimes these guys are real hard to take off. The timing covers themselves, they're really hard to take off, but we'll see. Oh, no, there it goes. And there's the oil. Let's 
So I am gonna have to jack up the bike so I can get the tire off the ground. So I'm gonna let this drain and uh, pop these off really quick. What's going on, brother? So since I bought new push rods for this, this is what we're gonna do with the old ones. Oh, no, it didn't break. I'll go at an angle now. I'll go in a little deeper. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Pushrod. Thank you, Pushrod. Oh, push What's up, Spanky? Ah. There you go. Ah. Ah, there we go. Stay up. Ah. Ah. All right. So now when you're at that point, these old old rings right here, make sure you take them out and you throw them away. Because if you don't, you're gonna forget about them and you wish you did. So there's two up here. You get a pick like this and you just fill under there and then you go like this and it should come out. And there it is. Dang, that one feels like it's not even there. Oh, it is there. There it is. Make sure you get them out because don't be like me. When you do your first job, you put them in here and like that. And then you're trying to stuff it up there and you're telling your boss it won't go in there. Well, it won't go in because there's already one in there. <laughs> and the last thing I need to do that I want to ask my brother help with, I got to jack the bike up. But what I need to do is I couldn't push it in and at the same time because when I put those shocks in, it's an inch and a half lower. So I need to pull the bike so you can stick the jack in. Brother, if you're good. Is that square on the thing? Uh, yeah. You got enough on your end? Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now, we got to put this girl in fifth gear. And in order to do that, you got to spin the wheel. Oh, I know why. You got to take out the spark plugs. Right? I'm telling you, bro, I cracked myself. Let's see. All right, now let's see. Much easier, huh? I'm going to line up the cam. Not that you have to. Can you hold that wheel? Yeah, you can. There you go. Thank you. Well, there's a second person. There's a way. Not a wheel. Yeah, person. thank you. All right, brother, I'm gonna need you again. He's like, what, again? There it is. Thank you, my brother. You like right on. You gonna go wind it down? All right, brother, thank you, man, I appreciate it. Just you your book. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, have a good night, man. I'll be, I'll be looking what time are you going tomorrow? Stay All right, brother. Have a good night. Get some rest, man. You look beat. The tensioner usually has a pin that keeps it in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one side off. And then as soon as you loosen this, it's going to pop out. tensioner still looks really good i mean it doesn't it doesn't look really bad it has grooves in it i'll show you guys so this bike has eighteen thousand miles on it you can see the grooves in it is that too close can you guys see that i mean it's still it's still good just when you do this a lot of people replace <sighs> they replace these guys so we're going to reuse the same chain and everything so i want to keep it exactly the same way now we're going to end up taking these quarter 20s off so i can actually take these off too but yeah i'm gonna lose i'm gonna crack these two there's steps to putting this back on 
So you want to count the bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts that hold the cam plate on. And then there's four bolts that hold the, uh, the oil pump on. So I'm going to leave these like that because I'm going to take the whole thing off as a unit. You can tell that these guys were torqued like that from the dealership. I'm going to go buy me a little pan tomorrow. I'm going to use like a Tupperware, a Tupperware pan. I need to get me a quarter inch uh, electric gun. Hi, Popeyes. Now all this oil, huh? Huh, Leo? As soon as I can, guys, I'm gonna actually get a, I wanna get the money to be able to get a, a table. I don't want a cheap table. I want a really good table. So I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to get a, a business loan right now so I can finance all the things that I need. I want to press. Um, I've seen some really good presses. They're not that expensive. It's getting dark. I don't know what time it is. But I've seen some really good presses that are, you know, really good ones for, you know, several hundred bucks. So a lot of people say that you can't get a socket in here. You can't if you got everything on, but you can when you, if you put these in like this first, you can actually get these all nice and torqued. Sometimes the uh, push rods are too long. And uh, if the push rods are too long, then you have to put the uh, lifter covers the tappet covers, you have to put those on with the uh, the push rod covers, but you don't always have to do that. You wanna get this pin out too, cause this pin right here, don't lose that pin. That pin is actually what keeps the lifters from spinning. They got oil in them, so. Put them somewhere like in a little bowl or something where they're really not going to leak. And you want to make sure you don't drop anything inside of this. So let's get these other ones out. I got one left. Make sure your washers, you don't drop them. Always make sure, just double check you got your washers in your hand. Let them float down. Keep them inside of there. Give these guys a little tap. And you want to always throw these guys away too. And uh, you always want to clean this surface up with like an emery cloth or something, a real soft emery cloth, just so you can get it to, to grip on here as well. But you want to clean and blow off all that. Make sure you don't get anything inside. And this is your pin. You got a pin on each side. And what it does, I'll show you. The tappets, they're not supposed to rotate, right? And they, they're supposed to lock into place. So you got to spin it until it stays so it doesn't actually turn. And that's what this does, it keeps it from spinning, keeps it from rotating so that it'll it'll spin correctly on the, uh, on the cam. All right, so let's get these guys out. I'm gonna reuse the same uh, push rods, I mean the same tappets. This one's got a little tiny wear on it. You could barely, barely see it, but they look good. These still look really good, so I'm not gonna change them. Now this is ready to come out. These are stock 96 cams. And remember those four bolts that we went over? That's for this. So you wanna actually put this on first. And there's actually an O-ring where this goes. That's where the pump feeds the fluid in and out. But, uh, oh yeah, these cams look like they got some wear on them. Oh yeah, they do, man. It's 18,000 miles. 
So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work on the bench tomorrow. I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna take these cams off. Here's another tensioner for this chain. And so I'm gonna inspect this tensioner. This tensioner looks good, the plate looks good. So you don't really need to, you don't really need to change any of this. Set that down here. So I'm gonna change those bearings out tomorrow. I'm gonna check the runout on this guy to make sure it's gotta be 12 or below one thousandths. You know, I, I got a feeling this one's gonna be pretty low. It's in really, really good condition, so. Hey guys, good morning. So this is day two of my uh, cam job on my 2007 Ultra. Looking forward to getting that thing put back in and getting it running to see how it how it sounds, how different it rides. I'm just excited, man. I can't wait to get this going. So, hey, if you guys have not entered my uh, current giveaway, I'm uh, still giving away the 2009 Ultra and the 2010 Street Glide. I've been advertising them now for months. I know this has uh, been going on long, but this is my first giveaway, man. You guys got to work with me and give me a chance. So share these videos with all your friends and family man so we could try to give these bikes away as soon as possible i'm looking forward to give these bikes away do this raffle and actually buy another bike i want to build another bike so i need your guys' support thank you to my new subscribers i think we've gained like probably 80 or 90 in the last 30 days let's get this going so we can give these bikes away and with all that being said let's get in this uh, day two on the cams okay guys here goes the cams we're going to take these guys apart. Taking the four screws out of the oil pump. So this is the oil pump here and you wanna keep the gears and everything exactly the way they are. I should be wearing gloves, but. There we go. So I'm taking the uh, the inner tensioner off. Oh yeah, this is in really, really good shape. I mean, my boss always tells me, you know, if something's in really good condition, you, it doesn't need replacement, then there's no reason to replace it, right? Goes right there, you wanna take that clip, you wanna set this little spacer right next to it. Let's see. There we go. You wanna set that right there with that, that way we know what it is pull these guys out yeah this cam had some wear to it man let's compare these to the other ones so here's the old cams right and you can see a little bit better how the, they have the wear on them if you compare them to these guys the lighting's not that great but if you compare them to those guys you can see all those wear marks right there see that and these guys don't have anything. These are the TTS 100s. These are like my boss's favorite cams. He does a lot of the dyno tuning. And for a 96, he says these are the best. Right now my bike has like 60, I think 64, 65 horsepower. I'm probably gonna get anywhere from like 96 to pretty close to 100. And I'm not sure what the torque is. Okay, so I got this, uh, this inner bearing removal tool so basically what it is is this inner part actually snaps inside behind the bearing it has a lip behind it i'll show you guys my apologies for not doing it before and then this slider goes over it right and then you get your nut and your washer and you go over it like so but before you do that get that any tighter you want to get this little uh rod here right and you wanna get it in as far as you can. And this one's, let's see if it's tighter on the other side. Nope. So as long as you got that pushed in all the way, cause it's hitting the plate in the back, you don't wanna go any further than that. Hold it in, tighten this up till you can't tighten it up anymore. And depending on the size of your nut, this one's a one and one eighth. And you just start slowly tightening it up. And what that's doing with that rod inside of there it's actually starting to pull that bearing out. This one's not so tight. The rod's not real tight either. Well, we're barely getting in there, so you just keep going. It's probably sliding out fairly easy. Maybe it's not. Is the whole thing spinning? Yeah, the whole thing's spinning. So I gotta get a wrench to hold this and then get a bigger wrench for that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold this one with the five eighths and I'm gonna tighten that one up in the back so we can actually 
start to pull it out. There we go. So there it is. Now I can actually use this because it's grabbing and it's actually pulling it. Let me go lower so you guys can actually see. I don't know if you guys can see it coming out. There's other ways you can get a plate. The gyms are pretty expensive. There it is. Oh, there's already a lip back there. Oh yeah, these both have lips to where they see a lot of them don't. But this has a lip to where it stops. So basically, you can see the bearing inside of there. So let me screw this out. Let's get this all the way out so I can show you guys. You can see the bearing. You can see these lips right here. It's got like a little, uh, it's rounded off, right? And then it's got that lip where it actually grabs the, uh, the bearing and the bearing can't go anywhere. So it, it actually pulls it out. Basically the way it is, is you get this and you have to, you can't just push it in. You have to actually put your nut on there, get a hammer. And when this is seated, then you tap it in there. And it basically, when you tap it in, it basically goes in like that right and then you just keep pushing it till it passes that lip and then it locks in place then you get this you put it over you get your rod put that over and sometimes the rod will well when you tighten it up it actually expands that rods are not it's supposed to fit a little snugger than that it expands those guys and then as you're tightening it up it's pulling that bearing all the way out that's just a quick uh, explanation on that okay guys so I don't have the, the driver tool right now, the Jim's driver tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my old cam that came out to drive these in. So this is pretty much what I'm doing. I took one of the old bearings. Let me see if you could see this way better. Maybe that way, yeah, right? So you can see how this has an, a roller, right? See the roller bearing and then a space, a roller and a space. Well, these are the new Timkins. Do you see how these are like bearing, bearing, bearing all the way around? So what I'm gonna do is I already put assembly lube on this. You wanna put it with the letters outside. Where's the letters at? There they go, facing out. So it's gonna go in like this. And I already put some assembly lube on it. And you just wanna go ahead and get it centered like so, and then just tap it in. And you'll know if it's going in straight. You could fill it. Okay, a little more. And you can hear that little ping and that's telling you that you're in all the way. So I'm gonna get this one in now. That one's in all the way. And you can see how they're both in, right? And so I'm gonna blow everything off right now, clean all this stuff up and that's it. So this goes off and these are the ones that came out, the stocks. You can see that I tapped it, didn't do anything to this cam, even though I'm not gonna use it anymore. So I'm gonna toss these and I'm gonna store these cams. So the bearings are in, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the cams together on the cam plate and the tensors and all that too. Okay, so I've already put the bearings in. Now I'm gonna assemble this, uh, this cam plate. You wanna make sure that you don't leave any any kind of residue or anything on this. So I don't know if I told you guys what happened. What happened was I had to send the, uh, the TTS 100s back. And the reason why is because you see how the stock cams have this little spacer pressed on and these Screaming Eagles actually don't have the spacer because they're, they're actually machined that way, right? Well, the TTS 100s did not come with this sleeve. They come like that from the factory. And so they only have this little center piece without this sleeve on it, which you need to fit inside those Timken bearings, right? You see how this fits perfectly inside that inner bearing and it spins, right? Well, that other one did not have this sleeve and it was just bouncing around. So what I found out the ones with the smaller fitment in the back without this sleeve are for the 88, 2000 or 2001 or 2005 conversion kit. So I had to send them back. So I'm going to blow a bunch of this stuff off and I will be back with you guys in a second. So you want to put an assembly loop 
on everything, right? Put the chain on both of them first, and then you could slide them down, right? You wanna make sure you get them lined up perfectly down here before you put them in. There they go. And you see that those yellow markings? They're exactly the same in the front. So then you drop these two down in here. There we go. So they're dropped down together. I'm gonna use this washer. It goes there. And then they give you a new C-clamp. On this, you also have to pay attention. See that the back is flat and that's the one you go on to go in and the front is usually rounded. A lot of people just don't pay attention to that. So that's in there. So now that, that one's actually in and it's not gonna come out. And so you wanna make sure when you spin it that those dots line up. And then when you spin it around, there's a dot there. I don't know if you can see it and a dot there. And it's lined up actually perfectly. I'm gonna get this guy on there. It's a tensioner. Use some blue Loctite on that. So these are uh, these are quarter twenty bolts. So you always want to go like eight to ten pounds on the torque on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my torque wrench. So it's set to nine pounds right now. You're supposed to go eight to ten, right? So I'm gonna go nine. There you go. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I just like double checking. Yeah, that's on there. Okay. And when you get it in like that, you want to make sure that, that it spins nice and free. And it does. Put a little bit of... There you go. So we'll set these back to uh, right there. So this girl's actually going to be ready here in a second to go in. So I'm going to put these bushings which i believe are the right size back in the bike and then the oil pump i'm going to put that back in as well so this is the o-ring that goes right here for the oil pump actually right here this sits just like that and the oil pump sits there just like so actually like this and those are the bolts that actually go to it there's a technique to this i'm going to show you guys when i put this on so i'm going to actually put these o-rings in there now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour assembly lube all over this, all over the chain. Just help it to go in so much better all over the tensioner. It's not going to hurt anything. Bring this stuff over here. Okay, guys, I made a major screw up. I wasn't recording that last one. Very disappointing. I apologize for that. So basically what I did was I put the new O-rings that go behind here for the for the two oil channels, the galleys that are in there. And then I put the new one in the back where the pump goes. I installed the pump by itself first. Then I installed the plate with the cams in the two, two uh, Timken bearings in the back. After that, I torqued the six bolts that go to the outer cam plate. There's four bolts that are back here for the oil pump. And there's a certain procedure that you got to go. You got to pretty much hand tighten them. Then you want to go ahead and spin the wheel around a couple of turns. And then you want to torque it maybe 20 inch pounds. And then you want to spin the wheel again. That way you're letting the oil pump adjust to the camshaft because there's gears inside. And if you go ahead and you torque that down right away without doing that, spinning the wheel, you're basically aligning the oil pump with the with the crank and so it's a slow process so then after you do it 20 pounds or 25 inch i'm sorry 25 inch pounds 30 inch pounds then you want to go up to like 60 inch pounds then you want to go up to 80 inch pounds and then you're you keep turning the tire in between and then your final your final torquing is 120 inch pounds they're quarter 20 bolts so you don't ever want to go more than 120. just always go by your book whatever it tells you to do and then I checked the spacing on, on here. So what you do is you, you tighten the bottom gear down, the crank gear, and then you tighten the cam gear, and then you want to get a straight edge 
and you wanna make sure that you don't have more than 10 thousandths play. This one that's in here now is the stock 110 shim. Then they go to 120, 130, and basically you're bringing it out. It can't have more than 10 thousandths uh, when you put the straight edge on both of these in the back or spacing, I should say. Yeah, I put these gears on, this gets torqued at 25. I haven't done it yet. This gets torqued at 35. And then these right here get torqued at around eight or nine pounds. They're, they're, they're quarter inch, but you don't want to go more than like say nine pounds on those 10 at the most. Anyways, man, I'm sorry. I wish you guys could have seen that process. I really thought that I was uh, recording for you guys. You know, it's very interesting to see when somebody actually physically does it versus somebody explaining it to you on the phone. So I guess we'll just move on from there. So what I'm doing now is I'm soaking the uh, lifters because I'm getting ready to, to take care of that. And so you can see the bubbles coming up. That's basically uh, showing that the uh, oil is filling up the lifters and uh, it's getting all the bubbles out. So what I wanted to show you was how this goes together. So basically, when you get the new kit, you get the top part, right? The top tube, you put the cup in like so, then the spring is the same on both sides. So you could slide the spring in, you get your washer, one side's more rounded than the other. I usually put the flat part next to the spring so that it'll actually seat the spring really, really good. And then I put a little bit of oil on the, uh, the O-ring. And then this is the bottom tube, right? Which sits in the housing like so, just like that. And this is the top part. So the bottom part's a lot bigger than the top. So then this actually sleeve goes up like so. And then this tube comes out. Get a little bit of oil in there and it'll it'll make it a little bit a little bit easier to slide. So that's how that goes. And then when you're done doing the push rod adjustment, then that sits in there just like that. And you can see that these are a little bit, there's a difference in the sizes. So I wanted to just show you guys why I'm using the new ones. These are the new ones here. And these are actually the old ones. You can see the old O-ring, the actual washer there, the flat parts on the very tops resting against the spring. And then it goes just like that. So these are the spacers that I talked about. I have a 110 in there now. I went and bought, uh, picked up a 130 from uh, Jim. And then I ordered these come in a sets of five. They're actual Harley spacers. They start at 110, they go in increments of 10. So I have a 110, which, which is what I have in there now. And then it goes to 120, 130, 140, and 150. These washers, they actually separate the cam. So the bottom cam, Whatever one sticks out first is the one that you actually want to align your uh, your gauge on. So we'll say this, right? Your flat edge. So basically you want to line this up on the bottom. Whichever one sticks out the most, you want to line that up on. And then if the top one is here, you want to make sure that you don't have more than 10 thousandths on the inside and 10 thousandths on the outside. So I checked it right now and this is a number 12. And if the 12 fits back there, then that's too much. You don't want to go more than 10. So I tried the 10 and then I tried the 12 and I could probably even get a 13 in there. So it's got a 110 shim in the back. And let me show you, there's five of them. They go all the way from here's the 150, here's the 130, here's the 140. And then the other two should be 30 and 10. There's the 110, you look at the last numbers there. So that's the first one. And then here is the 120. So they go in increments of 10. I'm gonna go up a little bit and I think the 120 should fit perfectly. And then I remember to line up the holes when I do the timing again. Right now I'm just trying to check the, the measurement. So let's take that 110 out, take the gear off. We'll pull the 110 out. If you look at these by eye, you'll never be able to, let me get a magnet. It's hard to pull off. Any magnet that you use, you wanna make sure you clean it really, really good. Make sure that there's nothing on it. So if you look at these, this is the 110, right? 110, 110, you can probably barely, barely see it. This is the 120. So you can't even really tell the thickness. 
That 110 actually looks a little bit thicker than the 120. So I might even need to go 130. But you won't know until you put the gear back on. There it is. All right, so the bottom one's nice and tight. We're gonna get this guy loose nice and snug, finger snug. Okay, there we go. Turn this baby back down here. Now I wanna check it again. That looks like it's exactly 10. Let me try the 12. I just wanna make sure I can't get a 12 in there. I cannot get a 12 in there, so that's perfect. That uh, 120 worked perfect. A 130 would probably be even better. I'm gonna try it. I want this thing to be as true as possible. People think that these cam jobs are, are easy, but they're not. You have to make sure everything's, this is a 130. You gotta make sure everything's lined up absolutely perfect because you know you don't want to, uh, and if you guys notice, I got the engine strapped down because I actually uh, jacked up the bike higher to make it easier to work with. And you know, the ultimate way to do this guys is if you had a table, right? But I don't have a table right now. And so that, that's what kind of makes this hard to do if you don't have a table because some of this requires like to torque these. At the shop, we usually bring the wheel all the way down. The bike's on a table and we just have like, you know, the scissor jack that goes up with, with the wrench, right? With the ratchet. And you bring it down and you get that wheel down and it's easy to actually torque those down, the rear wheel being on the ground. There it is. But I can't do that, so. I don't want to let the bike all the way down because I got it all strapped nice and tight right now, right? So it won't go anywhere. All right, let's check this now. So I'm gonna get the flashlight and see if I can get any kind of a light behind it as I hold it nice and snug on the bottom. Oh my God, that's... That's absolutely perfect, guys. Absolutely perfect. The 130 was absolutely the right one. So now I'm gonna leave that 130 in there. These are lined up perfectly. It's gonna be even and there's not gonna be any fast wear and gears being off will just cause all kinds of problems. So let's get the chain back on. So you wanna make sure that those are lined up just like that. So what we'll do is we'll put the top one in Get the bottom one at the same time and there they go they're lined up perfectly let me let me move the rear wheel to show you there you go see how the two dots are lined up perfectly so now what we're going to do we're going to get this back on but we're going to use red loctite get a nice little amount on there this goes to 25 it's a half inch 25 pounds of torque and this is 35 pounds of torque get a nice little amount on there you want to get as much as you can. I'm glad that I ended up uh, changing it because 30 worked out absolutely perfect. And I mean, they're just, they're lined up perfectly, man. And that's great. All right, so let me get my torque wrench. So we're going to go 25 on the bottom. All right, that's 25. And we'll go 35 on that one. So there we go. So now we're gonna get these guys torque here as well. All right, that's 120. That's 120. Nice little wrench, checked in. It's not a snap-on, but it works perfect for all the small stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna get ready to put the cover on, but I wanna wipe this down and clean this as good as I can. These are all torqued. Tor torqued these all to 120 yesterday. I aligned the uh, oil pump. I rotated the tire about five or six really good turns and uh, did a 30 inch pound torque, then a 60, then a 90, and then a 120, rotating the wheel at the same time. So I got some carb cleaner here. What you wanna do is you wanna get this nice and clean so you can get the gasket to stick and if there's any old gasket on there or any old residue you want to get all that gasket off and sometimes you got to use a little bit of elbow grease so i actually had these soaking in oil now i can actually take them out 
and drop them in. Don't let your gloves uh, get stuck in there. You don't want any particles in there. That's why a lot of people don't like wearing these gloves because I've had pieces of, bl of glove actually get caught. And you don't want to do that. All right. So once you get the push rods in there, these are your pins, right? These pins actually keep the push rods. They go right inside of here and you got to turn the push rods on the flat spot so they don't spin and that sits right in there. Can you guys see that? See how that pin sits right in here? It keeps the push rod from spinning because the rollers are actually going this way. They're rolling it the same way. So if you didn't have that in there, these things would actually be able to spin. So you wanna make sure you get these gaskets in there the right way. So the wider side and this little guy right here is for the pin. And then we wanna make sure we get the right, there's a front and a back, and this says front. So this goes on the front. They usually have a, an, an F and an R. So this is gonna go like this, right? Because the back side's wider. And so this is gonna be the intake. The inners are always the intake and the outers are always the exhaust. Okay guys, I'm putting the, uh, the bolts in. Sorry guys, I'm blocking you guys. So I'm gonna snug these up first and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna torque them. These are quarter 20 bolts. All these quarter 20s, these, all these small ones are 120 inch pounds. That's 120. 20, go the back one, the back one, all right, double check them, yep, I like to go over everything twice guys because you always get a little more out of it after, okay there we go, now I'm doing the other side real quick, so you can't, as long as you got the front on the front, the back on the back, you can't mix these up. I mean, you can if you put that one over here and you put that one over there, then you're gonna, when you go to put your push rods in, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, this isn't going. So always look in the back. It's got an F on one and an R on the other. I'm excited guys, this is getting close. Before you get those push rods in here and the, uh, the push rod sleeves, you wanna make sure that you uh, get all the O-rings in there. You know, if you put a little bit of oil or a little bit of a, uh, it's called dye something that you the like that you put on electrical stuff. You put that on here, and it'll actually hold them up. Some people just put them around the top, and they put the bottom ones in here with a little bit of oil. And as long as these are in here, make sure when you put those in and you go to close them up that they're not pinched. Because a lot of times when you're wiggling them around and moving them around, or you got them in and you're actually adjusting the push rods, these will pop up and you'll end up pinching it and it'll end up causing a leak. And all you gotta do is loosen it and fix it, but still, that's not the point. You don't wanna have to go back and redo stuff. So now I'm gonna torque these guys. Remember, quarter 20 bolts always go 120 inch pounds. There you go. That one, go across. Here. Go here. Do that one twice, that one twice, that one twice. See how you always get a little more out of them? So there's two sets of O-rings. The skinnier big ones go on the bottom inside here. And then these thicker, thicker, smaller ones go right in there. And this is where I usually put them and I leave them right there and make sure when I put them up and I go to put the uh, sleeve covers on, I make sure that I, uh, always put those in so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to get a little bit of oil on these guys and i'm going to put them in there you can actually see them in there right that one in there so those are in so i got this tube in yesterday i already got the zero lash out of that so what that pretty much means is when you stick it in the tube basically what you do is you start turning them counterclockwise and I'll show you, see how it collapses? Well, the minute you get a couple turns on there, it doesn't want to collapse anymore. So what you're doing is you're bringing this out. And if you look right here, the more spins 
I go counterclockwise, pretty soon the threads are gonna come out. And here they come. See the threads? And that's when you know you get real close. And this nut is your locking nut that you wanna use two 7 16ths. You hold the top one after you get your 34 flats or your four full turns. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. But first you gotta take the zero lash out, which means you gotta get it, the top on the rocker, the bottom one barely, barely touching the tappet. As soon as that's barely touching the tappet and this actually is hitting the top, there's you have no movement up and down, that's zero lash. And so I'm gonna take this and turn this back out and I'm gonna turn that clockwise, like so, right? Clockwise, so that I can put this one in. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. I'm gonna put this back in the tube. These are called quickie push rods. There you go, see? So what I'm gonna do is put that back in here and I'm gonna lube up this O-ring really quick and set it on there so that when I push it up here, right? And look at, look at all the space that I have down there. So I know that that push rod is up, right? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and start turning it until I touch the bottom of the tappet. See how I can rock it up and down right now, look at this. So I'm gonna get it in the top of the rocker. I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise and keep moving it. It's gonna take me a little bit longer because the exhaust are usually longer than the uh, intake. So this one didn't take me that long to do it. See how it's barely moving now? So I'm gonna push that up against the top rocker and keep turning. And then there it is. I barely hit the top rocker and you got zero lash. If I turn it in a little bit, then I'm gonna have movement. So I'm gonna hold the top one, rock it until it stops. When it stops, that's when you know you have zero lash. I'm gonna mark this one on the top and I'm gonna turn that one on the top, but I wanna get this in there first up into the housing and usually I do the back one first I do the the intake first and then I do the exhaust after but I didn't want to pull that one back out because I have it at zero lash right now so at this point what you want to do is make sure that you still have the rubber o-rings on the bottom before you start and they're there and then you want to make sure you got the top ones in that one's in and that one's in you want to make sure they're both in there so this is that top dead center. These both are on the same dot right now. So when you put the timing in, you check the back cylinder and you make sure that it's a top dead center. And that's when you can actually adjust both of these. If you check these right now, the intake's all the way down, but the exhaust is up. So when I do this, this is gonna go one full 360 turn, the bottom gear, and the top one's gonna go 180 all the way up here. And that's when you know you're at top dead center in the front and you can actually uh, do this one. All right, so we're gonna take this white paint here and we're gonna mark that one. So I'm gonna hold the bottom one and then I'm gonna actually go four turns on that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the one in the back, but I'm gonna have to get something to actually hold these up. So give me a second, guys. So what I did is I did four full turns on that and it's, pretty tight so i know for a fact that it's pressed up against the uh the top rocker so these were actually really full remember i soaked them inside of a, a cup so the uh tappets are pretty full so i'm going to give it a few minutes and see if it comes down or i know it's going to come down but so at this point what you want to do is you want to get two seven sixteenths wrenches hold the top one and tighten up that bottom one really good but you want to make sure that the bottom the quarter inch one does not spin as well. So I'm gonna actually hold all three of those. So I'm gonna hold this one here, just tighten this one, make sure that bottom one doesn't turn. I don't see it turning. All right, there we go. That front one's done. It's all locked in, ready to go. So now I'm gonna do the one in the back. Okay. Now I'm gonna mark this one and I'm gonna give it four turns. So you wanna lose that mark. That's why it's easier to do the inside one first and then the outside, because I did the outside one 
first to show you guys, but I should have did the back one and then did this one. Just made it a little bit harder on myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this guy here just like that. And then I'm gonna give the one in the back four good turns. So that's one. That's two. That's three. And that is, that's four right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach down in here. I'm gonna grab that nut. And you can just use a pick. They're not real hard to bring up. There it is right there, see it? So now that one right there goes clockwise. So what I'm doing is bringing that nut all the way to the top. You can see it is right there. So I'm gonna hold the one in the back and I'm actually gonna turn the one in the front. There we go. So those are all done. So now I can spin the one in the front. Can you guys see how I can spin that one? There's a lot of pressure on, on the one in the rear. So we're just gonna hang tight. We're not even gonna mess with anything. I wanna wait till this goes down and loosens up and then we'll be able to jump to the front. We're almost done guys. We're almost done, I'm excited. So the front one's turning pretty good. So I'm gonna try to get my retaining clip in there. I wanna get that in there, push that baby down. Get your clip in there on the top. Pop that girl in on the bottom. And there we go. And that one is in. Now all we gotta do is wait for this one. And actually that one's spinning pretty good too. So we're going to take the clip out, hang that right there. Make sure that's not pinched on the bottom. Pop this girl in, get that little top out and get that baby locked up inside. There it is. You want to make sure the top one goes in, right guys? Then you get your tool, get your top portion in first, pull that baby all the way down and then get your, get your clip in there like so. And like I said, it's a lot easier if you do the back one, fill all the way around, make sure they're in there. So that one is done too. Sweet. So now what we're gonna do since that was there, let me let me actually turn the wheel. Now these are both down and I can do the fronts. See how this, this is on the top on the line and this is as well. So now these two should be, let me just peek in here really quick. You wanna make sure that you don't get those O-rings out of there. Yep, they're all good. They're both even. All right guys, now we're ready to do the fronts. So I'm gonna put this little uh, O-ring back in there. I can make sure that it's in there. And then I'm gonna get this tube for the intake. Make sure it's in there. Okay, I'm gonna get this, hook that, and bring it up there to hold it, right? And then I'm gonna bring this girl down and start turning it out so I can get to zero lash. So I'm holding the top and I'm turning the bottom one this way, right? Sliding up and down a little bit. See it? You can hear it ticking. There it is, it stopped. It's at zero lash right there. Mark it right where it's at. Let that paint dry. So what I'm gonna do now is I got this O-ring in, I got the top O-ring in. So I'm gonna grab this and my little quarter inch and I'm gonna hold this guy. And then I'm gonna go four full turns on this one. So that's one, that's two, that's three. That's four right there. And now I'm gonna take the locking nut and go up. I'm gonna hold this back one here. I'm gonna hold that top one. And then I'm gonna grab the other 7 16th that I have and I'm gonna tighten the locking nut. <sighs> yep, 
Get that O-ring nice and lubricated with that oil. Slap that baby back in there. So we'll sit tight until that one right there loosens up. Not loose yet. When you're done, you wanna make sure that you don't have any of your O-rings pushed out. I'm guilty of that, I've done that before. Where your O-ring gets pinched and then it's sticking out like that. You don't wanna do that. So once I'm done with these guys, getting the lifters on there and everything, then I'm gonna put the timing cover back on, I'm gonna get the exhaust back on, and then I'm gonna get the floorboard back on it, and then we're gonna start this girl up and see how she sounds. Oh uh, yeah, it's almost there guys, it's almost there. All right guys, let's get this top one in now. Got the O-ring here, the O-ring's down there. Get this in here. This is the exhaust. And you can see how this went all the way up. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold it up until we fill it inside of there. And then I'm gonna start spinning it until it comes out. Okay, the lash is out. We'll go back just a hair. No lash. So I'm gonna mark it right there. Let that dry a little bit. This one should be able to spin now. It's spinning pretty good. So now I'm gonna hold the bottom one and then I'm gonna give the top four full turns. And there is four right there. Let me get this on here like this. <clears throat> That's not going anywhere. That's good. Pinch that down. Get this guy in there. There we go. Fill it around, make sure it's pressed up. Make sure it's locked in on the top. There you go. Check the O-ring. That one's good to go. Let's see if this thing's turning. Yeah! See that? Yeah, baby! That's exactly what we wanted, guys. So now I'm gonna try to rotate it and just see how it is. Make sure that everything's in there right and we're not hitting anything bad. All right. I did this yesterday. And so I just wanna make sure that, you know, everything's done. I'm just gonna check these again. So I had a hard time turning it yesterday and that's why I was actually worried, but I wasn't sure if I let them bleed down all the way. I thought I gave them enough time, but it could, like I said before, it could take up to 20 minutes, sometimes even longer than that to let them bleed down. And the, the uh, tappets were actually really full because I <clears throat> soaked them in that overnight. And so they were literally full when I put them in. Of course, they were going to have a ton of pressure in them. So anyways, let's get started on this and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the clips back in. Make sure all these are sealed really, really good before I bring them down. And uh, we'll just go from there. I'm going to put everything back on it and get everything covered up. So, all right. There it goes. Okay, there we go. Make sure that they're pressed in all the way and we're good to go. All right, I'll get this gasket on there. There we go. We grab the cover. So now let's get some Loctite on these screws. Get these guys in there. So I'm gonna get these all snug and then I'm, it calls for uh, anywhere from 90 to 120 inch pounds. I'm just gonna use my bigger torque wrench and just go 10 pounds on them. You know what, I'm just gonna use this 120 inch pounds. So you wanna start on one side and just kinda just stagger them. You don't wanna go All right, so now I'm gonna get the exhaust on there, but before I do that, I'm gonna wipe everything down really, really, really quick. Just wipe a lot of this stuff down, get the oil off of everything. This is that spray that I was telling you guys about, the 1903. 
That looks really good. Okay, guys. I need to get this guy behind there. And you gotta go out pretty much like so. There we go. So I'm gonna hold that there. And I'm gonna try to get some of these bolts in this back over here so I can hold this thing up. So I don't wanna get these all the way tight. I'm only getting one on there like that so it can hold it. There we go. Okay guys, so I got these two bolts in. Getting this one in right here. The center bolt underneath the transmission. There it goes. I'll tighten that one up here in a sec. And then make sure this is straight back here. Yep, tighten these guys up really quick. And I'm gonna tighten this guy up. I had to loosen that so I can get it on there straight. All right, that's good. This has actually been a really fun job, guys. It's been a great experience. All right, exhaust is in. That's good. Don't forget to put your bike back in uh, neutral. You have to spin the tire a little bit in order to get it. There we go. So I basically just want to run the oil. I want to build pressure in the oil pump till the uh, oil light turns off. Now I'm going to put the spark plugs in, guys. All right, guys, let's start this girl up and see how she runs. All right, guys, I got it going finally. I had to redo the tappets again because they were off. 